Well, John Steenhoff is the Managing Director of the Human Rights Law Alliance, which is a good friend of the Australian Christian Lobby and a law firm that is committed to human rights and religious freedom issues. Um, John, I thought that I'd get you on today and, and have a chat to you about the Israel Folau case. Now, I think a lot of people are really, really interested in it, wanting to know what's going on. But for those who might have been living under a rock or a little bit disengaged in the last couple of weeks, let us know what's going on with Izzy Folau. Where are we at? Well, certainly it's a big case, Martin. Um, Israel Folau, superstar rugby player, devout Christian. He's been active on social media for a long time, making posts about Christianity, and now he's gotten into trouble. Mm. He's gotten into trouble for a post uh, that he made on the 10th of April, quoting from the Bible, and he's up for discipline in front of the Australian Rugby Union Disciplinary Tribunal. Now, the post that he sent was a little meme, a, a photo, for those who have not uh, seen the post. It says, warning, drunks, homosexuals, adulterers, liars, fornicators, thieves, atheists, idolaters, hell awaits you. And then there's a call to repent. And what a lot of people have missed is the fact that Israel says there, Jesus Christ loves you and is giving you time to turn away from your sin. Right. So see, the other thing, the thing that strikes me there then is firstly that there's a whole gospel message, if you like, in his post. Mm -hmm. It's not just, um, it's not that some people condemned him for not including a call related to the love of Christ is something that I read, but obviously he did. But also it's the fruit of a course of conduct. So if you look at his Instagram, as you were in intimating before, or his Twitter or anything else, uh, memes like this, scripture verses, um, Christian, specifically Christian content, is actually littered throughout over a course of many, many months in which you see a much broader variety of Christian issues covered. Am I right? That's exactly right. This is not an unusual post out of the blue. If you right. look at inst his Instagram feed, Israel Folau is a committed Christian. Everyone who has decided to look at his feed knows yep. that. He's always giving glory to God. He's always calling people to believe okay. in Jesus Christ. So the context is clear. But something captured the imagination of everyone, right? It was really that word, homosexuals. That's what started all of this. Exactly. Once this post got onto Instagram, it unleashed a maelstrom of activity in the media. People immediately grasped onto it and started to write articles and contact the ARU about the fact that this was bigoted and intolerant and that here was Israel Folau who'd got in trouble for a post about homosexuality last year, mm. now doing the same thing again, vilifying homosexuals, offending a whole so section of society uh, that the ARU has said we want to represent and, and need to be represented in rugby. Mm. So the ARU reaction was quite swift. They put up an announcement, a short announcement, and it went like this. Rugby Australia is aware of a post made by Israel Folau on his Instagram account this afternoon. The content within the post is unacceptable. It does not represent the values of the sport and is disrespectful to members of the rugby community. The Rugby Australia Integrity Unit has been engaged on the matter tonight. And there's nothing in there about a contract. So the, the, the complaints so far are about the content, the fact that it is uh, somehow uh, unacceptable. But one of the criticisms put has been that he was in breach of his contract by doing this. Now that, I don't know, I notice it's not there. Is that true? Well, the only people who know that are people who've seen his contract, which we haven't. Right. But reading in the media, there's been varying reports. Some people said this breaches a social media policy that was imposed on him. And then it came to light, and I think this is the case, that he never signed up to a social media policy right. in his contract. That he's subject to the same generic rugby contract that all of the other Wallabies and all of the New South Wales players are party to. Right. So it seems then if there is no such social media clause in his contract, and we, you know, we could argue about whether that's even reasonable for them to do that, but, but seeing as they, it seems they haven't, no, nothing was signed, it really does come back to what Rugby Australia said. It comes back to whether or not the content of his post is acceptable for a player of the game of rugby. That's actually what it's all about. That's a good question, Martin. And really it is a, a legal question that has to be determined within the broader context of his employment. Right. Because it's not like 
someone who is an employee of a company can just post anything they want at any time, anywhere on their social media and then claim freedom of speech or freedom of religion. There are certain impositions that employers can make on their employees, such as not to adversely speak about their employer, and the courts have recognised those to be perfectly acceptable. Mm. But Israel's case is different. He didn't say anything about playing rugby. He didn't say anything about his willingness to play rugby with certain people in the community. What he expressed were his religious beliefs and expressed those religious beliefs by a paraphrase of a Bible verse. He basically parroted the Bible in his personal Instagram post. The argument that it's inconsistent with the values of the game, is that a good enough argument to see someone like Israel Folau uh, fired, that he would post something that's inconsistent with their values? Absolutely not. Okay. I, when you look at the, the, what I would see as almost like a lynch mob that started after this post, you had sections of the woke and progressive media together with some very socially active corporate sponsors who were out for blood for Israel Folau because of the mention of homosexuals, not drunks, not adulterers. Right. So they're trying to frame this within the context of what they see as their absolute and new religion. Uh, it's not too extreme to talk about their attitude as being alike to a sort of zealotry. Hmm. We've got a, a new sexual orthodoxy that says there's certain things that you must not only accept, but also endorse. Hmm. And certainly on sexual orientation and gender identity issues, Israel Folau has learned that if you speak against it, even as an expression of your religion, you're going to get steamrolled. That has to have broader implications than just Israel Folau. It's got to go way beyond him. Because what about the rest of us? What about all the Christians watching this who have beliefs that are biblical uh, and, 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 and they're working in different contexts? How does it affect them? That's a really good point because at its heart, Israel's case is every Christian's case. If Israel Folau, a world-famous rugby star, can be stopped from making personal posts in relation to his faith, it's going to have consequences for your ordinary, everyday Australian in any walk of life. And at the HRLA, we are actually representing many people who are facing the same or similar issues to Israel. Mm -hmm. And so while we have parties like the Australian Rugby Union who get ahead of themselves, paint themselves into a corner by terminating someone like Israel Folau. The fact is, I think he's got some very good arguments that he's going to be able to bring before the tribunal. Okay. His, his fundamental religious freedoms have protections at law. Well, run us through those. I mean, on Saturday, there's going to be um, this panel that's convened by Rugby Australia. Israel Folau will front up to it and there'll be arguments made. He'll be legally represented. Um, how's that going to play out? Give us some of the arguments that he may have on his side in this instance. Well, leaving aside all of the contractual arguments and the way that Rugby Australia have, have, have used process and procedure, if we look at the fundamental issue of religious freedom, there's, there's this. Firstly, in New South Wales law, they have an anti-discrimination law which does not protect religious freedom. Okay, and that's a problem. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. And that's something that needs to be addressed. And it's different through different states. Yeah. But it's not the end of the story. Okay. Because all of us, when we're employed, are covered by a whole series of laws in relation to employment. Israel, no different. He is covered by the Fair Work Act, which says that no one can be terminated on the basis of religion. In this case, it seems pretty clear that Israel Folau has expressed his religion personally. Rugby Union Australia has taken offence to that and wants to terminate him for religious reasons. So they could be just straightforwardly in breach of the Fair Work Act? I think so. And look, there's arguments they're going to raise. One of the arguments is, well, we're not breaching his rights to religion. He can believe anything he wants. It's just the way that he expresses it that is problematic. And oftentimes you'll see in the media people saying, yes, Israel Folau can believe what he wants, but he should not let it outside the team room or he should not put it on Instagram. Well, that 
shows a clear ignorance of what his rights are. Mm. We as Australians are signatories to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICCPR. And that says that your freedom of religion is not just the freedom to believe something, it's the freedom to manifest that religion. It's the freedom to practice that religion in public. Mm. It is unacceptable for anyone to argue that people can be Christians, but they have to keep their beliefs yeah. in their head and to themselves. Right, and there is a, a big legal argument on the Fair Work Act that they're gonna to have to deal with. Quickly, what are some, what are some other things? Are there some smaller arguments they could raise or other options? I mean, have they just got a one, one option or more? Well, uh, while the New South Wales Act doesn't have a protection for religion, it's interesting that it has a protection for race. You okay. cannot racially discriminate against somebody. And if you've been watching the news, you'll see that a lot of the Pacific Island players have been reacting to Israel Folau's post. Some of them liked it and then were told to unlike the post. Others have actually posted messages from the Bible around Easter time right. and said, well, if you're going to fire Israel Folau, you might as well fire all of us because this is part of our fundamental Pacific Islander beliefs. And the New South Wales Act says we recognise people who are from a ethno-religious group as constituting a I race. See. And to discriminate against them would be racial discrimination. I see. So if he can say it's part of his ethno-religious identity, he's Correct. in with the racial discrimination option. So he can say, ARU, they are racially discriminating against not just me, but all Pacific Islanders who hold to this as part of their culture hold to Christian views and tenets. And pressure has been applied to Rugby Australia so far, and it seems to have been very effective, despite the fact there's strong legal arguments against them. Um, what do you think that pressure is going to look like this coming, you know, tomorrow when, the, um, when, 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 they, when they have the hearing? Do you think the pressure upon the three people who will be convening that will be so enormous that it will be very hard for them not to find against Israel Folau and fire him? This is a really hard case because it's very, very high profile. Right. And there are a lot of people with entrenched positions on both sides, yeah. but there are immense political implications and economic implications for Rugby Australia. There are players in the existing Wallabies squad who've said, well, we won't play with Israel Folau if he is cleared of this misconduct finding. You've got a coach who said, I'm finding it hard to select him. Uh, you know, you would hope that every tribunal is impartial, but they're mm. all human beings. They're right. subject to the same pressures we are. Mm. And uh, I would expect that uh, the end of the story won't be the tribunal mm. hearing and that uh, Israel Folau certainly is going to have a difficult time in that hearing.